think everyone can acquire language. Everyone can pick up language subconsciously. When I first got into college, almost all my classmates could speak English fluently. I could barely form simple sentences, so I started feeling left behind. From the moment on, I felt a real need of learning English. Some say practice makes perfect, but what makes practice is the need. In this video, I'm about to show you everything I did to learn English and everything I still do to improve it. I'll also give you tips and ideas of free resources you can be using to do the same. But before that, one thing needs to be clear. Why do you want to learn English? As I said, the need makes practice. So, in order to build practice and consistency, you gotta have a well-established objective. After you consider this, we can move to the methods and resources. So, if you don't want to lose it, stick to the end. Of course, all of us learn things differently, so I'm just sharing a work for me. You can be a very systematic person and so you probably want to make a schedule and follow a table of specific contents in a proper way of organization. Or, just like me, you can be someone who is not that organized and who doesn't like to study grammar. <laughs> and thus, you'll be willing to make your own schedule of studies with stress-free, flexible and not boring resources. You've probably heard of Stephen Crashing. And actually, one of the things I learned from him was that there is a difference between learning and acquiring a language. We acquire language in only one way. This is the big moment. When we understand messages. We've tried everything else. We've tried teaching grammar. We've tried having students memorize vocabulary. We've tried everything. But the only thing that works is giving people messages they understand, what we now call comprehensible input. Although some people may not like Stephen Crash's theories, according to this linguist, the acquisition is a product of a subconscious process very similar to the process children go through when they acquire their first language. Acquisition is immersion. It provides the person with the practical knowledge of the language. What parents do to their children when these are in their early years is a communicative approach. The key receives messages and his challenge is understand those messages and thus reacting to it, which is communication. Whereas learning focuses on providing theoretical knowledge of a language. Learning refers to learning about a language, its sound system, its structure, and this process happens consciously. The student is aware of this, he knows he is learning about verbs, adjectives, pronouns, and so on, which is not a problem at all. You really must study grammar if you want to communicate smarter or at least in a way that makes sense in that language. But consider a bit you just study grammar and make writing and reading exercises. When you encounter a situation in which you have to communicate orally, you probably feel stuck. You might understand what you hear, but you won't be able to express yourself in that language through your speaking skills. Because learning a language requires meaningful interaction in that target language, which is natural communication, in which speakers are concentrated not in the form of their utterances, but in the communicative act, the communicative approach. But how do you do this? For example, you're reading a book, you're listening to a conversation, you are, of course, listening to the presentation, you are reading the book, but without realizing it at the same time, you might be acquiring. Enjoy learning English. Be creative. Technology is on our side. Memorizing words, sentences, and grammar structures doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to become an endless list of isolated words. And learn any given language doesn't have to be the boring task you have to do to accomplish your dreams. You can listen to music and podcasts, read articles and books, write on social media or just on your bullet journal or planner. Now let me explain that better. First, you might be thinking, okay, 
How would I do it if I barely understand spoken English? How would I do it if I just do Duolingo tasks? How would I understand phrases and context in a fast speed of real English of the day-by-day reality? And no, I'm not criticizing Duolingo. It's a good app if you want to have fun learning vocab. It is something you can use along with tons of other resources. The thing is, when it comes to learning, the more flexible and creative, the more efficient. So, as I was saying, even if you're just a beginner, you gotta push yourself to spend as much as time with English as you possibly can. Remember, if you are willing to not just learn English, but acquire it and speak it naturally, you need immersion. As time goes on, you realize the need will make practice. The need of understanding your favorite celebrities in a view. Your need of getting to sing your favorite songs. Your need of reading the original ones of your favorite books. The need of communicating with people from other places around the world. Even without understanding one single thing, at first, little by little, you start acquiring a few patterns just from listening, and then you have to repeat it. Speak to yourself, ask yourself questions, tell yourself stories, learn phrases, not simply isolated words. Focus on the communicative approach, speak as much as you can, even if it is just from the get go. This is active learning, even if your pronunciation is not that good yet, it doesn't matter now. Record yourself speaking, have friends to whom you can talk to, do imitation techniques. Don't look for mechanic dialogues or conversations. If you have a favorite singer, actor, or some sort of famous person that you really love, you can search for interviews, for example. As you are already drawn to that person, it would be so much easier for you to stay tuned and watch the video or listen to that podcast to the end, even if you don't understand anything from that. And that would actually force you to try to understand what's being said. There are different ways of doing imitation techniques. You'll probably find tons of videos about it, but the most important thing is that it actually works. Of course, some people would say that it is not that efficient, but try to pick at least one short text with an audio and first listen to it. After that, try to listen to one phrase and repeat after it. There is growing support in Finland and Sweden for the countries to join the North Atlantic. There is growing support in Finland and Sweden for the countries to join the North Atlantic. It doesn't have to sound perfectly equal to the audio at first time, but keep doing it with all the phrases and do this at least every week. After, you see for yourself not only the difference of acquiring vocab, but also you notice you got some pronunciation patterns and keys without even noticing. You see that you get so much more familiar with vocab, pronunciation, and especially, you will naturally acquire the rhythm of English. So that was it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do it if you feel like. And also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I know it was too general, but I want to go more in depth on this topic in future videos. So stay tuned. And that's it. See ya!